Dr. Lapora Flanoy, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, yeah, Jonathan. thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited mm -hmm. to have this conversation with you. And we're going to be focusing mm -hmm. on leading for transformational change. Uh, that's a big topic. And so there's a lot that we can explore there. Um, but I think given your experience and background in executive coaching mm -hmm. and uh, consulting within organizations to drive change, uh, I think this will be a rich uh, and deep opportunity for us to, to have a conversation. As we get started, I wanted mm -hmm. to share Lapora's uh, bio with everybody. Dr. Lapora Flanoy is a client-focused and data-driven executive coach who has more than 15 years working with the C-suite uh, to better organizations. She successfully works with leaders under high pressure and in demanding environments to deliver results and outcomes that matter to individuals and make an organizational impact. Uh, Dr. Lapora partners with leaders to master their efforts in an era of uncertainty and rap and rapidly changing industries. Her clients are renewed with better and more appropriate focus. While her present focus is on coaching and assessing executive leaders, she has also directly shaped and transformed high performing cultures and motivated teams to exceed growth and financial objectives. So again, welcome Lapora. Great to have you with me today. Uh, I'm excited for this conversation. Before we launch Likewise. in yeah, before we launch into the mm -hmm. dialogue, anything else specifically that you would like to share by way of background, personal context, or anything like that to lay the foundation for our conversation? Um, sure. You know, you pretty much summed it up, but just like to, you know, speak to people out there. We obviously know this is a, a delicate time where there's a lot of transformation and and I know it can be daunting, but just to you know, speak to, to companies, organizations to be open-minded as far as how they look for that new normal. Like that's a, a big piece that I share with my clients is that it doesn't have to be a cookie cutter and it, it can be customized to your organization and what your needs are going forward. Absolutely, and customization mm -hmm. is essential. Uh, yes. when, whenever we're talking about change, there are kind of common principles and themes and there's change models. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some of these things that can help provide contextualization and guidance and mm -hmm. how we move forward towards transformational yes. change. But the reality is that every organization is unique. Every executive and leadership team is unique. Every uh, industry is unique and every challenge mm -hmm. that's pushing us towards change is unique. And so we, we apply a broad lens of, of various uh, theories and mm -hmm. models and different tools that can help us to drive change, recognizing that there's there's no, you know, out of the box, um, or rather not out of the box, off the shelf is what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. There's no off the shelf solution for transformational right. change within organizations. Absolutely. Just, despite what some people might try to tell you. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. Well, so let's start off by exploring a little bit more what you mean by transformational change. Sure. Um, how, how is transformational change different than perhaps just change? Mm -hmm. uh, and then how do we start as leaders, either middle management or all the way up to executive levels, how do we start to lead for that desired transformational change? Absolutely. It's a great question. Great start. So first and foremost, when we look at transformation and change, uh, I personally espouse to the Kaizen philosophy. And, and that is just pretty much a Japanese philosophy that is very old that states there's always room for improvement. So there's always that continuous growth that we all can have, and which is an indication of life. To me, change is an indication that <laughs> this is a living organism, whether it's an individual or an organization. Um, so that being said, you have your intermittent change, you know, that's not constant. You have your incremental change, you know, that are small doses over time. And then we have your transformational change. And so that's the big, the big change. So to give you an example, I'll just throw out a random example out there. You have a compensation department, for example. They may understand that they're missing um, a certain a, a, a certain band within their compensation um, philosophy and structure because they are constantly underbidding for a specific role. So given that, they may add 
an expansion to whatever that band is. So say for example, it's you know, 75,000 to 150,000, they may change it, you know, given the fact that they're out of market, um, they may do a benchmarking study and realize, okay, we have to expand it 75,000 more and change it from 100 to $200,000. That's a change, you know, they made a change, they realized they had to do a tweak for a certain role. A, a transformation is looking more so at their overall compensation philosophy and saying, hey, it's outdated the way that we lead compensation. So we, meet, we need to completely overhaul what we're doing. They maybe haven't updated in a while. Um, they may not be paying based on performance, but only paying, you know, for example, cost of living. Uh, they may have 100 bands when they really only need 10. So something like that is a massive change. You know, another massive change is going from working in the office five days a week to working at home five days a week. That's another transformation versus say, for example, a change might be, okay, you're working from home or remotely once every two weeks. The reason why what makes a transformation transformation are the conditions that need to adapt and adjust in order for that change to be successful. So it's a big adjustment for people and so therefore big preparations need to be made. So that is the biggest difference between a change, so to speak, versus a transformational change, which obviously at the end of the day is going to be subjective based upon the organization. Yeah, and I think, you know, we all experience change constantly. I really like the, your initial framing of change means growth right? If, yes. if we're in a learning organization, if we have a growth mindset where we're constantly trying to um, develop ourselves and uh, achieve our greatest potential, then there's necessarily going to be change. And there's yes. going to be discomfort, there's going to be ambiguity and uncertainty, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So part of this um, leading change, leading transformational change is starting with an acknowledgement that change is normal to be expected and really to be embraced, frankly, if we want to learn and grow and develop into our true potential. Um, and then, you know, to your point, uh, that, that everyday change that happens all around us as we're growing, that's one thing. Transformational change we often talk about in terms of those big things that happen within an organization mm -hmm. that represent major shifts. Um, not, not little minor tweaks to policy right. or a reshuffling of the chair, the deck chairs on the deck, you know, in mm -hmm. terms of like, you know, some of the minor reorgs that sometimes happen. I was part of, uh, you know, a reorg in an organization recently mm -hmm. where, you know, they, they, they were framing it as wanting a transformational change, but really all mm -hmm. they were doing was this really minor shuffling of the chairs and mm -hmm. there was nothing actually impactful happening <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to help them understand that. So, so yes. part of that is just recognizing the, the different types in terms of what our end goal is, what our objective mm -hmm. is. Uh, but then that also has different implications for how we lead it out. Um, so mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts in terms of just kind of everyday change, growth mindset, innovative culture, you know, that kind of stuff. How do we lead that? And how might that look different than how we lead transformational change? Absolutely. So the former makes the latter far easier. <laughs> you know, so with both, you're talking about a level of change maturity. And for me, when I look at an organization, I say, well, this organization has a high level of change maturity. This one has a lower level. Sure, I can share the symptoms with you. Um, you know, this organization is more used to change happening. You know, this organization is more adaptive and agile. But one major difference I typically see in those types of organizations is the one with the higher change maturity is more of a continuous learning organization, whereas the one with the lower change maturity is not. So by continuous learning, they tend to have a framework, a mindset focused on we need to continuously learn just what it says. So they typically have goals for their individuals. So it may be, for example, we want you to study or you know, learn, ramp up your skill 40 hours a year. That's like a basic you know, 
best practices as far as how much individuals should be learning each year. Continuous Learning Organization realizes that the industry is constantly changing, the world is constantly changing. So if they're not continuously learning, they're not going to keep up to speed in a way that's effective or competitive. So to me, that's the biggest difference. If you're constantly learning, then you know that when you learn something, you are applying it. You're changing your behavior, even if it is in an incremental manner. And so an organization that's focused on that is focused on, we need to be ready in order to pivot whenever that time is necessary. Looking specifically, for example, at COVID and how organizations responded, you can see a stark contrast. So if you follow the LinkedIn articles and other articles uh, within the media, you'll see a lot of CEOs scurrying, organizations just totally overwhelmed by how to operate in a remote fashion. I've consulted some organizations, surprisingly large, successful Fortune, Fortune 500 organizations that didn't want their people to work from home. This is pre-COVID. They didn't trust their people to work from home. IT operations <laughs> where they're spending, you know, six hours of the day on the computer coding and programming, they felt as if the people need to be in the office in order to be, you know, babysat, so to speak, face value, face time, what have you. Then fast forward past COVID, these same organizations are struggling to survive because they had no operation that, you know, that was ready for the remote um, communications, their leaders were used to basically hand-holding or walking by, supervising, you know, by FaceTime, how much time do you have in the office? And so they had no idea how to use objective performance management measures as ways to identify whether or not their direct reports are being successful. And so you have organizations that were just completely not prepared. Sure, we could call them, you know, change immature, but to me, they really were not focused on continuously learning, continuously adapting what they could do as an organization. If those managers were continuously learning, then they would understand how to set those objectives, how to set those goals for their employees based upon what they were expecting as outcomes, not based upon how many hours they spent in a chair sitting, you know, 500 feet from them. Similarly, from the perspective of technology. You know, we're continuously learning. Well, we understand even in HR space, what are the best practices, HRIT systems out there? You know, what can we use that will be effective regardless of whether we're in the same space or not? I mean, globalization is nothing new. So therefore, remote learning, remote communication, and even managing should not have been anything new to organizations. And that's with no disrespect. But this is something we've been talking about for decades. So yeah, I, I think to to that point, like nobody saw a global pandemic that was going to shut everything down overnight right. and move everything to remote work. Nobody saw that right. coming. But the 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 movement towards you know technological disruptions and virtual work and interconnected global economies, like all that's. A tr trends Business that have been continuity. For decades. This it's yes. been there, you know. So it's a matter of, well, do I send my people to learn just in time, or am I going to be a continuous learning organization where I believe my people should always be learning what the best practices are, what the options are? To me, that's what differentiate differentiates a change mature organization from one that's not. Am I proactively learning with my people? Or am I learning in a more reactive, just-in-time manner that may be not just in time, but too late when you're faced with a pandemic like COVID? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really well said. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm understanding you correctly, mm -hmm. if I'm leading towards change, small c change, mm -hmm. that's an attitude of just continual yes. learning, continual growth, um, creating a culture of flexibility and agility um, where people recognize it's part of their role and their job to constantly be pushing the envelope and learning yeah. and growing. Yeah. Um, and if, if you do that, if you lead for the small C mm -hmm. change, it makes the opportunity 
uh, when required for transformational mm -hmm. big scale change, capital C change, that can happen much easier. It's still of difficult. Uh, any any transformational change is going to um, disrupt so many things and it's going to be very difficult. But if you've already built that culture of, of change and growth, then then it's, it's possible. If you haven't if you haven't built that culture in advance, that transformational change is going to be really, yeah. really hard. It way, way harder than it would have been otherwise. And that's when we talk about the statistics of failed change initiatives, that's usually what we're mm -hmm. talking about, right? Is that people that don't have that change maturity, they haven't invested in the small C change. And, and now they're facing this big mm -hmm. dilemma where they have to adapt quickly and they're not really exactly. equipped. They're it's not overwhelming, capable. you know, at that point, you know, because to the point that you're saying, when we're doing continuous learning, if we're constantly learning, we can't help but to make changes. We can't help but to see if we're seeing a better way of doing things. We can't help but to want to adapt to that. You know, and when we're not doing that and say, for example, now we have a, a massive overhaul, we have to go from, say, a manual to an automated process. It's like, well, that's overwhelming because now we're not doing a 10 degree change, a 50 degree change. Now we have to do a 180 when we weren't even used to doing you know, the incremental 15 degree pivot. So how do I do that? I don't, I freeze, you know, it's too much because I'm not used to that. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think it's it's important for anyone listening today to, to first take a step back, think about your organizational culture, your team culture, uh, and what is your personal openness and your team's openness towards continual growth, learning, and change. And if it's not quite where you'd want it to be, you can start taking simple steps now to start to develop and reinforce that kind of a culture and reward that kind of a, a mindset. Um, that's going to be foundational for, for later on. And so it takes effort now. It takes a long view, I suppose, because it takes effort now and you may not see immediate return on that investment, mm -hmm. but it will uh, lay the groundwork for these other bigger changes coming down the road. And it's something you can start today. So that's something everyone can start thinking about. And then you can start to consider what, you know, as you, as you scan the environment, you scan the internal and external um, pressure points uh, and you, you start to notice, you know, where things aren't quite, you know, functioning as well as you would hope that's where you can start to have the bigger picture discussions that can then lead to some of these transformational types of changes that could um, occur that might actually really, really benefit your organization and uh, help you, you know, reinvent yourself mm -hmm. perhaps, but at least continue to uh, develop and maintain a competitive advantage to bring value to the market. Absolutely. And that's definitely a, a long-term success strategy. Because on the other end, what organizations typically do is find themselves in situations like a lot of organizations are now where they have to hire externally. They go out and hire consultants like myself to basically help them transform quickly because they don't have the maturity to do it independently. But what this does oftentimes, especially if you hire certain organizations that are implementation focused only, they will fish for you, but they won't teach you how to fish. So then you'll be in the same situation over and over again. Every time you need a major transformation, you exactly. have to go outside because you refuse to build that change maturity. So the best way long-term is to build that internal change maturity by continuous learning so that you are equipped to lead those transformations internally. And if you do need outside help, it's an incremental way, whereas you understand what's going on and you're not surrendering the fate of your organization to an outside vendor because nobody should do that. It's not healthy. <laughs> it's highly no, risky. No, it's it's not. <laughs> it's not healthy. Absolutely, very mm -hmm. risky. Um, and and to your point, I mean, there's no quick right. fix. So I, I think sometimes because an organization, because leaders or executives, they haven't been willing to prioritize, right? The 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 development of um, a, a change mm -hmm. culture. And, and because they haven't done that, then when this new 
they they finally get to the point of recognizing yes we need to have this transformational shift we have the, we need this transformational change they recognize they don't have the capacities to do it so they want to bring in a consultant my experience mm -hmm. is usually their expectation is that that consultant is going to be be able to come in and guide and implement that change mm -hmm. very quickly yes. they want rapid change yes. and you cannot um, fast track a meaningful, sustainable change initiative. There's just, there, there's no way to do that. Um, you can bring someone in and they can be the most brilliant person in the world with all the expertise in the world. And it still takes time. It just does. You're, you're and, absolutely right. if you, and, and so, so leaders have to remember that mm -hmm. um, if you're not willing to invest now, you will invest later in all of the opportunity, lost opportunity mm -hmm. costs and the, the lost productivity and everything else related to failed change initiatives and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, there's no quick, easy fix. And you can, you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars mm -hmm. with the, the, with the most prestigious consulting agencies mm -hmm. to try to come in and still it, it doesn't always work because um, if there's no internal commitment to change, uh, then the, those transformational changes can never take hold. That's very true. You need the internal commitment. You need the capabilities to make sure that those are in-house to sustain in the long term. And then you need that preparation, the training, and the know-how for what that change is. You know, just because it's the best idea does not equate to your people being prepared. So those people have to be prepared and trained while doing most likely their full-time jobs. And so it is to your point, Jonathan, it is a process. And I'm always telling leaders, you have to expect in most cases, some type of performance dip when you're doing massive transformational change while engaging your people because they do have these full-time roles while they're now adapting new skill sets and adapting new responsibilities. So while I help as much as I can to lower that performance dip, you know, to the, the slope that it could be, there's still a performance dip. So it's not this fast, you know, get her done, low investment or no investment from your people, but it is an investment of time, commitment, knowledge transfer, and culture shifts that have to happen when you're talking about major transformations. Amen. That well said. <laughs> um, well, Lapora, we're almost out of time for today, but uh, I really appreciate all of your insights. Uh, before we close, mm -hmm. I want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your organization, what you can do to help them, uh, and then give us the final word on the topic for Absolutely. today. Absolutely. So you can find me at nextgenpeople.com. That is our talent management, executive coaching, consultancy services. Uh, we work with all corporations and all organizations as well. Um, DrLapore.com, I do more B2C work on that end. And that's more dealing with individual leaders who want direct support on their own. Uh, final word is I know this is a very difficult time for many organizations. And it's unfair, you know, quite frankly, <laughs> for everyone um, during this pandemic. But I just want to reiterate what I said before. Your organization is unique. You have a unique culture, a unique operation and processes, and you have unique people. And so honor that with your new normal. It is great for you to read th thought leadership articles, best practices, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're doing what's best for your organization, for your people, and for your culture. That's what's going to sustain you successfully in the long term. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lapora. It's been a Thanks real pleasure. Me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having mm -hmm. you and having this conversation. We could dig way deeper and perhaps mm -hmm. I could have you back on another time to, uh, where we sure. could explore this to a greater extent. Uh, but I hope everyone has been able to take away at least a few nuggets of what you can start doing today uh, to make a difference in terms of that change culture, that change mindset within your organization mm -hmm. that will prepare you for when these big, huge, uh, monumental transformational changes uh, have to happen in the future. As always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day, and I hope you all have a great week.